I was born in Mansfield, Nottinghamshire, and I lived there till I was 18. It was still a mining town in those days with a working colliery. My father came over to England shortly after the war from his native um, Warsaw because um, there was nothing left. Um, they needed men to work down the pit. Mansfield was very polluted um, by the coal industry. It was true that you put your washing out on the line and brought it in flecked with soot. So you needed to get out into the woods and fields. My family didn't have a car in those days, uh, so at weekends we might take a bus out to Budby or Edwinstow, uh, that's in Sherwood Forest, um, or we'd just walk a couple of miles outside town up Jenny Beckett's Lane to Berry Hill Wood. Uh, it's a big housing estate now, but in the 1960s it was all open fields. Or we'd walk past Crown Farm Colliery to Ling Forest, um, that was mixed deciduous wood, um, oak, silver birch, clearings of heather and gorse. And I remember the meadows. They were strewn with wild flowers, alive with butterflies. My father was a, a bit of a butterfly collector. I mean, he wouldn't do it now, but in those days, they were so abundant. Um, and we'd set off with our observer's books of butterflies, and I think we had one of wild flowers, um, or it might have been a nice spy book. But, but nature was very close at hand, um, even on the slag heaps, the, the pit tips. They soon got colonised by um, invasive species like rose bay willow herb, which is the food plant of the elephant hawk moth. Um, so we used to go and collect the eggs off the, um, off the plants and, and bring them back and put them in fish tanks um, with pl plenty of fresh leaves. We used to feed them every day. And, and it was great fun watching the larva. They chomp down the leaves like that, nom, 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 packing it away. You could literally see them grow. I haven't been an artist all my life. I wanted to, um, but lots of things got in the way. Um, so I'm a late starter um, and therefore I'm really going for it now. <laughs> While I was still um, doing what you might call my day job, um, I used to paint at uh, weekends. I was a Sunday painter. Once the, the kids had left home and I got to less work um, on that front. Um, but then most artists have got a, a, another job. It, it is quite hard to make a living solely from art. Um, but you do have to put the hours in. I mean, that's why Virginia Woolf famously said, creativity needs freedom to, to work on your own art, not just for somebody else. Um, and to be an artist, she said, one needs a private income and a room of one's own. Um, and I guess I got my freedom when I retired. Um, fortunately, we managed to re retire a few years earlier. So my private income is my pension, and I can paint every day and all day if I want to, which I do. I, I do put the hours in. I am quite dedicated. People often ask me, how long did it take you to paint that? Except it's not just putting paint on canvas. Um, there's much more to being an artist than that. I mean, there's the admin for a start. You've got to meet your clients, deliver work to galleries. You've got to photograph your work and catalog it. You've got to put the images on. Uh, gallery websites, my own website, I send out newsletters, I have to keep accounts, <laughs> and then I go to art fairs. Well, actually, I only go to one, the other art fair, which is backed by Saatchi. And in fact, it's considered to be one of the best, so I'm really fortunate to be with them. The other thing that um, I spend time doing is I make my own canvases. I use high quality materials um, because if you were to buy uh, that quality ready-made, it would cost hundreds of pounds. Um, it's quite laborious and there's quite a few stages involved, but it's, it's pretty good downtime from actually painting. With most of my work, I, uh, I start with a coloured um, coat of underpaint and that's usually acrylic. I'll often make preliminary sketches as well. Uh, I'm, I make them outdoors or from photos that I've taken outdoors, which I then put on my laptop. Um, if I use my laptop, I frame the scene and then I, I map out the various areas and then I transfer that to the canvas and, um, and, and then start painting in oils. Another thing people ask is, why do I do it? Why do I paint and, and why landscapes? Um, well, it's something I feel I must do, and it was quite hard for me all those years when I wasn't actually able to get on with it. But it feels important to me, and nature is important to me. And, and when something is that important, you want to say something about it. And painting is the best way of communicating what I want to say. 
that I know. It, it's, it's become my language. Um, so in my work, I guess I want to say something about the natural world. I want to say, look at this amazing meadow, all that glorious hedgerow. And I want to tell others how I feel about these places and that they're essential to us. Um, and I hope that I can encourage others to cherish them, to look after them, not, not just protect them and fence them off and conserve them, but, but to actually live alongside them, to live in a world where we value nature, not as a resource to be exploited and consumed and ultimately destroyed, but one to live with. I've got a connection to a charity called Plant Life. Um, they own or manage many of the places that I've painted, a lot of the meadows and um, other habitats. So I'm really indebted to them for their amazing work and um, I support them. My next series of paintings is going to be about temperate rainforest. Um, it's the most luxuriant, diverse, lush habitats you've ever seen. The trees are all overgrown with mosses, lichens, ferns. They're simply beautiful. This sort of vegetation used to cover most of the British Isles, in fact, but um, as humans began to settle and, and take land, these uh, places have been cleared for agriculture. I mean, over thousands of years, not just, you know, um, recently, um, but most of these rainforests now only survive in areas that are inaccessible for farming. They tend to be found down the west of the country, as their name suggests, rainforests. Um, they need the rainfall. And I, I'm really excited about getting out and um, getting in amongst them and, and making sketches and, um, and painting them. All that green. Lockdown. Well, it seems to have awakened people's appreciation of the natural world somewhat. Um, and I think it's a result of staying local. They've begun to see what's on their doorstep, quite literally, the pavement plants um, and road verges um, that have sprung into flower uh, once the council couldn't get out and uh, mow um, with their tractor mowers. And many people have found they like the look of this. Um, so I think there's a new aesthetic emerging where people are turning away from their tidy manicured lawns and going for something more in tune um, with nature. And of course, it's also proved to be very beneficial for people's mental health. And I think if painting gives us a fresh perspective on the natural world, then painting the natural world is very important right now. Um, but I would say that, wouldn't I? <laughs> this is what I want people to get from my paintings. I, I believe that art can help us reconnect with our environment uh, and give us a way of looking at landscape so that we can better understand our place within it. Although my paintings are semi-abstract, I mean they're not botanical illustrations, um, they're about a sense of place, they're about being in nature and the exuberance of nature its abundance, and it's often very gaudy and showy with riotous colours, um, you know, really bright flowers. Um, when you look at my work, I, I want you to get that feeling I want, uh, and, and feel that you have that, that sense of place. I do other things besides painting. Um, I, um, I've created uh, designs for 3D work. I made uh, a model of a proposed public sculpture for Oxford's favourite flower, um, the snake's head fritillary. Uh, they grow abundantly um, and there used to be far more of them on the floodplains along the Thames, but obviously there's been um, building and development. Um, you can still see them in wildflower reserves uh, close to the city. There's one on Ifley Meadows. And um, I've developed this piece. These are giant fritillaries. And uh, the idea is that they would stand either springing from a pavement or maybe from an area in a reserve. And I'm hoping that this piece will be used as a focus for wildlife conservation, either in the city or for um, Oxfordshire. I went to Queen Elizabeth's Girls Grammar School in Mansfield, we called it Queggs. Those days everyone sat their 11 plus exam and you know you thought you were lucky to pass and even better to get your first choice school um, because all girls, well pretty well most, wanted to go to Queggs. Um, and when I was there I was put in the A stream 
but I was made to drop art and do Latin because I was going to need that to go to uni university, wasn't I? I wasn't actually allowed to do art. Well, you know, you might say, why didn't I push back? Why wasn't I more assertive um, and insist on doing art? And, and the simple answer is, it simply wasn't possible. Um, I remember actually asking if I could swap, and there were gasps of horror, you know, uh, what, ruin your chances? Clever girl like you, you know, implying uh, you don't need brains to be an artist. Uh, they said, do your art later in your spare time. Get yourself a degree, set yourself up. Nobody earns a living from art, and, you know, coming from my background, um, it did sort of make sense. I'd certainly had enough of being poor. The other thing is that I had no real experience of the art world. Um, I didn't really have any idea of how you could make it your career. I only knew I wanted to do it. <laughs> I mean, my school um, prided itself on giving you an all-round education. We had general studies, we had music appreciation, we had trips to the theatre, but we never went to an art gallery. I mean, Mansfield didn't have any art galleries. It had the local museum, and, and there were some little watercolours, rather lame watercolours, by uh, somebody called Buxton, um, which were more social documents than art, but nevertheless, I still thought they were great. I mean, I went to Stately Homes. My parents took us to Newstead Abbey, Hardwick Hall, Chatsworth House. But what you saw there were fusty old ancestral portraits, you know, and pictures of racehorses and, and prize bulls and things and, and pastoral idols. But I don't remember seeing anything post 18th century. The first contemporary exhibition I went to um, was of Bridget Riley at the Haywood Gallery in the South Bank in 1971. I was 18, I was in my last school year. Um, I remember I went with my boyfriend who was doing A-level law and he got tickets uh, from a local MP to visit the Strangers Gallery in the House of Commons. And, and then we went there and we went on to the exhibition, which was causing a sensation at the time. It, it was called Op Art. And uh, I remember the museum attendants were all wearing sunglasses. Uh, I thought it was thrilling. I, I knew it was what I wanted, but I was all set up to study sciences. I, I'd been offered a place at university. Um, and um, I ended up uh, doing that. And Eventually, I did teach environmental science. Whilst I was doing my science degree, um, I actually enrolled on an evening class as well. It was free for full-time students. In fact, I used to spend quite a bit of time in the art department. I was actually thinking of switching to the art degree at the time. Anyway, the painting class was full, so I joined the sculpture class next door. And that's where I met Peter Ball. Um, long story short, a few years later we were married and we were together for over 20 years um, and I helped him to make many sculptures, um, several of which are in cathedrals and churches all over the um, UK uh, as well as in private collections. I mean I can point to quite a few crucifixes and say I carved those feet. <laughs> so for many years I got my experience in art education vicariously, um, although I was the one with the day job and the steady income uh, came in handy um, and my teachers weren't wrong were they? I learned a great deal about making art and I learned a lot about the art market and I guess that helped me get started uh, when I finally got the chance to, to go it alone. I never did go to art school, so you might say I'm self-taught, but then I think all artists are self-taught at the end of the day. You learn by doing and you just keep on doing it. And if you feel you're failing, um, and I would say there's no such thing, but if that's how it feels, you just get on and fail better, as they say. Uh, you really do have to put the hours in, uh, and I do, and I love doing it.